Welcome and thanks for taking a tour of ArcServe Unified Data Protection version 6. In this video we will take a closer look at the user interface and the reporting capabilities in UDP. Let's take a look at the UDP console. The dashboard tab will be the first tab that is presented when you log into the UDP console. This will display the last seven days worth of backups and information on your storage. The resource tab will be the tab that you will primarily use in UDP for most configuration, backup, and restores. The categories here are nodes for node management, destinations for management of our backup destinations, plans where we can manage our backup plans, and infrastructure used to manage the backup infrastructure itself. We can also launch the configuration wizard through this tab. Let's add some additional nodes in the Resource tab. We can do this through the Configuration Wizard or by selecting the Add Nodes button. Let's begin by adding Hyper-V Host and its VMs. Add nodes by Hyper-V. Provide our Hyper-V host name or IP address. We'll see that it browsed to our Hyper-V machine. We can expand the list and just add specific VMs if we wish to add those. We'll select everything and add to list. Select Save. Now the Hyper-V group has been added to our nodes category. Now let's add a vSphere host and its VMs. We'll choose Import from vCenter or ESX. Provide the machine name and our credentials. We can also add specific machines if we only wish to bring over specific machines. We'll bring over everything, add it to the list, and save. We now have a vCenter ESX group added to our nodes category. Lastly, let's go ahead and add nodes through Active Directory so we see what that looks like. Provide our credentials. and we can search for specific machines if we wanted to do that as well. We will take the wildcard default here select add choose browse and now we can add specific machines or all the machines within there. I only wish to add this machine, so let's add this machine over. Provide our credentials. We'll go ahead and save. And now that machine's added as well. You'll notice the status of all these machines is a warning, which says they are not currently protected by a plan. You can also see under the plan column that the only machine that belongs to a plan is the console itself. We also have a hypervisor column which specifies which hypervisor they belong to. Last backup status is finished for our console itself. The backup time, the applications that are installed, the products that are installed, and the operating systems that are on those machines is also listed. Let's go ahead and add an agent-based plan. Instead of doing this through the configuration wizard, let's go to All Plans, Add a Plan, 
name the plan, select the type of plan, in this case it will be agent based windows, select the nodes that we wish to protect, move our machine over, say OK, choose our destination which will be our recovery point server, the data store will be our backups data store, and whether or not we wish to use a session password. Our schedule, we will stick with a daily infinite incremental backup schedule, however we could add merge schedules or throttle schedules. Also, the recovery point retention, if I were to add additional backup schedules such as weekly or monthly, we could set retentions for those as well. We always have to have at least one custom backup. This allows for the on-the-fly backup and does not interfere with the rest of your backup schedules. Do you wish to create catalog files at time of backup? By default it does it at time of restore. By doing it at time of backup your restores should be faster. By doing it at time of restore your backup speeds will be faster. Under the advanced tab we can use software snapshotting only or if we have hardware that supports hardware snapshotting, we can use the hardware snapshot wherever possible button. Currently we support NetApp FAS systems for this functionality only. We will be adding additional hardware vendors to do hardware snapshotting. If we wish to truncate SQL or exchange logs, we can do that daily, weekly, or monthly. Any scripts we wish to run before and after the snapshot, permissions to run those scripts, email notifications tied around the type of task, in this case it will be a backup task, notifications around merge, and because we have agents present, we could monitor the resource utilization and be notified if we hit certain thresholds that we can set. We can then save our backup plan. Let's create an agentless plan. Under the plan section, all plans, we will add a plan, name our plan, Select host based agent list for the task type. Identify the backup proxy. Select the nodes that we wish to protect. Let's bring over our Windows machines. Select OK. For VMware, we have the option to set the quiescing method either using VMware tools or VSS inside the VM, or take a snapshot without guest quiescence if the quiescence snapshot fails. VMware transport method is either let VMware select the available method, or we can set the transport mode manually. For Hyper-V, we could choose the Hyper-V snapshot method, either generated by VSS or VM will be placed into the save state. We can also choose to snapshot each individual VM separately. We will choose our destination, which will be our recovery point server, our backup data store, and we can provide a session password if needed. We can choose our schedule. We can add additional backup schedules we can add a merge schedule and we can do a throttle schedule. We can also edit this backup. We can also edit this infinite incremental if we did not wish it to be an infinite incremental. Our recovery point retention, we only selected dailies, but if we had weeklies or monthlies, we could go in and change and set retention for those as well. Generating catalog files, 
If we generate a catalog file at time of backup, our restores will be faster. If we generate catalog files at time of restore, our backups will be faster. Under the Advanced tab, we have the ability to use hardware snapshotting wherever possible and use transportable snapshots to improve the performance. Or we can just use a software snapshot. For tr log truncation for SQL and Exchange, daily, weekly, or monthly is our options. Any scripts we wish to run before and after the snapshot, our credentials for that. Email notifications tied around missed, failed, or successful backup jobs. And for merge, failure and success as well. We will then save our plan and it will be deployed out. Role-based administration allows administrators to assign different roles and permissions to different users for using the ArcServe UDP console. Each role can have its own permissions. A super administrator role can create customized roles and permissions for other users of the ArcServe UDP console. Using the role-based administration console, you can assign varied level of security to each role. From the settings tab, Let's choose user management on the bottom left. The user management page opens on the center pane. Click launch the ArcServe UDP user management console. Specify the username and password and click sign in. The identity service console homepage opens. Let's select users and roles. Under users, you can add or delete local or domain users from Windows User Console itself. The user management list on the Identity Service Console updates immediately. The user password could be changed from the Windows User Control. When you update the password of a user, the user must log into the Identity Service Console using the latest password. The role of the user is retained. You can assign different roles to different users and provide different permissions to different roles. Let's look at roles. There are several predefined roles already created. The function of a predefined role is to provide a reference for some typical role definition. Each role has a predefined set of permissions assigned. For the admin role, all the options in the permission are selected. An admin role can access all functions of ArcServe UDP. Let's look at the backup permissions. The following permissions are predefined for the backup role. Perform backup. Backup now. Add hypervisor and configure host base backup. View ArcServe backup servers. View cloud accounts. View recovery point servers and data stores. Manage nodes, including create, delete, update, deploy, view, manage plans, create, delete, deploy, pause, resume, update, view. Manage sites, creating, deleting, modifying again, viewing. Can monitor systems, monitor jobs via job tabs, can access logs tab, can access reports tab. Let's take a look at the restore role. Somebody under the restore role is able to manage an instant VM, which would be a restore. View ArcServe backup servers, view cloud accounts, view recovery point servers and data stores. Can view nodes, but cannot manage them. Can view plans, but cannot manage them. Can manage virtual standby. Can monitor jobs, cancel jobs, see job details, can access the jobs logs tag. And perform restores. You can create a customized role and select permissions for that role. We do that by clicking Add New Role. Choose our domain. Assign a role name. Select Next. Then we will assign the parent permission and any child permissions that we wish to attach to it. If we select the parent, all the child permissions are selected. However, we can go through and only select a few child permissions if we wish to do it that way as well. 
we would select Next, and then we would select the users for this role and select Finish, and that role would be assigned to that user. This concludes our tour of ArcServe Unified Data Protection version 6, where we took a look at the user interface and how to manage UDP itself, including reporting. We added nodes with both physical and virtual and set up backup plans as well. We also saw the role-based administration feature and which roles come predefined as well as how to set up new roles. For more detailed information, please review the content on ArcServe.com or you can contact and chat with an ArcServe sales representative. Thank you.